Boom! What is up, Wanderers? We are back with another One Take Bag Review, and today we've got a fun one. It is the EDC Transit Backpack from 3V Gear. All right, check out this beast. It is a 40 liter EDC backpack, which sounds crazy when you say it out loud, but it is indeed a 40 liter EDC backpack from 3V Gear. 3V's referring, of course, to uh, Julius Caesar's famous quote, Vini Vidi Vici, I came, I saw, I conquered. Um, kind of repurposed for this company's name and logo. And normally they're a tactical brand. So full on tactical supplies of the sort that you are definitely used to. Uh, but they do have what is called the Redline series. And the Redline series features a more modern appearance, a little bit more comfortable to carry in a city setting. Um, yeah, so you know what we do on this channel. We do one take bag reviews. So we're gonna do a one take shot straight through this whole video. We're gonna get into the inside and the outside of this bag, get into all the nooks and crannies. And then at the end of the walkthrough, we're gonna talk about the bag. We're gonna discuss two things that I love about the bag, two things not so much, and an overall recommendation should you chunk down 85 or so of your hard earned dollars on the EDC Transit backpack from the Redline series from 3V Gear. Lots of words. All right, let's begin. Okay, so first off on the exterior of this bag, I guess the first thing you see when you look at it is the red and black colorway with the red detail on the front zipper here, along with the massive field of laser cut Molly attachment points. So I guess PAL webbing to be specific, um, but there are attachment points on the side of this section. There are attachment points throughout. And then you may see peeking through one of the distinctive features of this series of bags. There is a topographic light gray fabric uh, behind the black fabric. And you're also gonna see that heavily featured throughout the interior of this bag as well. So I'll show you that here in just a second when we talk pockets. So front of the bag, very interesting. The material itself is a, a typical kind of cordura on the sides, some ripstop material on the upper, um, and this kind of middle section. And then of course, uh, kind of a rubberized uh, polyurethane PAL webbing field here. Eh, we'll talk about that, um, but it certainly does give the bag a unique look, a very uh, understated, 3V gear logo down here at the bottom, um, and then Cordura on the bottom of the pack as well. You've got a little bit of neoprene right here on the fairly large water bottle holder. So this thing is not a massive water bottle holder, so you're not talking about, you know, the largest version of the Nalgene fitting in here, but this is a 20 ounce uh, Starbucks tumbler here um, for uh, a hot cup of coffee, and it fit no problem. It is a very deep water bottle holder. So you don't have to worry on this bag about your your, your water bottle uh, sliding or slipping out of the bag at any point. And you can tighten it up with this compression strap to make sure that it stays really tight. You have one, two compression straps over here and two compression straps over here. While we're over here, we should probably also talk about another large field of attachment points. So if 40 liters of EDC bag isn't enough for you, then uh, you can attach more bags, doodads, doohickeys, and water bottle holders, and lights and lamps and everything in the world that is Molly compatible. Um, I did try attaching a Molly pouch to the front of this bag. This pouch um, in particular is the one that I tried when I wore this backpack. Uh, what I found was hey, it's a little bit of work to uh, thread the Molly um, straps through a field like this. Uh, but it, it is possible. What I did find as well, though, is that it was completely unnecessary given the large amount of pockets and storage on this bag to begin with. So we'll talk about that. All right, on the back, what do you have? You have a lot. Um, on the back, you have a really, really well cushioned set of um, straps along with a very, very cushioned, I mean, when I say very, I mean very cushioned back panel. Um, and a pocket we'll talk about now, a, a ton again of cushioning on the lumbar 
pad of this bag. You do have a waist, um, waist belt, which is removable. And you do have a sternum strap, which is also removable. You have uh, multiple attachment points. You can tighten up the harness. And you have a fairly thin but useful grab handle up top here with a neoprene section to hold the bag. So um, very nice. You do have a hydration port opening up here as well, which we will talk about when we get into the main compartment. All right. Another little nice detail here that I appreciated was some high contrast red stitching on the back panel. Otherwise, it would have been completely black on the straps and back panel. Whereas the side of the bag and the front of the bag, both up top here and on the front, have this kind of red zipper pop and a little bit of red stitching. So I like to see that they carried that throughout. You do, I forgot to mention, have a 3V gear printed logo right here as well. So fairly subtle, but not completely invisible on the branding here for 3V gear. All right, let's talk pockets as we do. So first pocket up front, we're getting into this one first. We've got a kind of a 50% zip on the diagonal and well, check that out. That's pretty nice, right? So you've got this topographic pattern for this EDC section. Um, and this is a little admin pocket panel here. Very useful pocket on this bag. Um, what do you have? You have one, two, three, four pin holders. And I've tossed, of course, you know, pens and also a pin light, which is a very handy light to have and own if you have a pocket, or excuse me, a bag with a, an admin pocket like this. You don't have to figure out where is my flashlight. You can just toss it into one of the pen holders. All right. So I've also tossed in a wallet into that section. And there's a slip pocket back here that I've put my Kindle in. So, you know, very useful pocket along with a little bit of space as a drop pocket in the front. Just a little bit. It doesn't go deeper than this section right here but it is pretty nice. It does look like there's a pocket right here. There is not a pocket right here. It does look like there um, might be a pocket on the side here to go in this way. There is not a pocket on the side here. It's just kind of the construction does make it look like there might be more pockets than there are on the front of the bag. But this pocket is nice um, and highly usable for daily admin. There's another admin pocket as well, which is on the side of the bag here. So we're gonna zip this down and I'm gonna Flip the bag around to this side of me. All right, check out this pocket. And the zipper pulls on this bag are kind of just a normal rubberized small zipper pull, but they work very well. So no issues with the zipper pulls. When you flap this bag open, or excuse me, this pocket open, you see the same topographic material. And inside this pocket, you have a slip pocket, which is sized well for an iPhone. And then you have um, two smaller pockets down here for pins, and then a larger pocket that could fit multi-tools, etc. I've got my little mermaid flipper knife in there. And then you have a side pocket here, which I've used for first aid supplies. So just toss some Neosporin, some sanitizer, and some bandages into that pocket. And I figure that that works pretty well. All right, so a nice side pocket that is deep and has lots of space to toss in accessories. So, useful pocket. And again, I've talked about this on a couple of bags recently. I do appreciate that instead of just tossing on the same water bottle pocket on the side, that they use that space for a pocket. Um, useful and appreciated. Okay, I think it's time for the main event. Well, actually, let me show you this pocket before we dig in, because the main event, the main pocket on this bag is pretty interesting. So let's get this out of the way. You have, in addition to a luggage pass-through back here, you have a little passport pocket. I've got my zero grid passport organizer in there. This one is also lined with the topo material. And the website from 3V Gear uh, does suggest that this might be a good pocket for CCW. Uh, I don't carry, but man, I feel like that would be incredibly uncomfortable. Yeah. So that might just poke you in the small of your back every single day because this is a very long backpack and this lumbar cushion down here really hits your lower back. And so, yeah, I'm not sure how that would work out for you. 
I think it might be pretty uncomfortable. You do have one more pocket up top here. It's a small pocket. I've got blue light blocking glasses and AirPods in there because this is a felt lined pocket. Um, just black felt lined and it's cushioned. Um, a really easy to get to kind of sunglasses pocket for you. Your boy doesn't wear sunglasses. Check this out. Where'd I put my zipper? Hard to do that. All right, there we go. All right, what's going on with this main pocket? That's going on with this main pocket. Holy crap, look at this. Nice. So this is again, a really, really distinctive feature on this 3V Gear Redline series. Look at this. I mean, that is beautiful. So you've got a full clamshell here. It's got a little bit of angle to it. This is a little bit of a, of a beaver tail clamshell. Whoop, beaver tail clamshell, hard to say. Okay, uh, but you got a lot of utility in this main compartment. I've tossed in a bag within a bag, just a knickknack from Green Room 136. You have a back panel um, pocket back here. You'll notice that I don't have anything in that one. So we'll talk about that in a second. You do not have any pockets on the side of the bag here. You do not have any hook and loop or molly attachment points inside the bag here, but you do have a nice laptop sleeve. And it is sized for most 15 inch laptops. I had no issue with my large Spectre folio there. And you do have a slip pocket right here, which will fit tablets, but is less cushioned, but I'll show you. There's my iPad, it just drops all the way down here. It is suspended off the bottom of the compartment, which is good, and it is padded in the back because of the laptop pocket, but not on the front, it's just fabric here. So, on the front of this backpack, you have two pockets here. I've got my Power Brick, the Anchor Nano, which doubles as a little, uh, battery backup, not just a brick, which is very convenient. You only have to carry one. I've got a link to all this stuff I use in the video description, of course. And then a mess of cords. So cords, battery backup or charger, laptop. So you're starting to see that this storage wise is a pretty darn convenient EDC bag as marketed by the folks at 3V Gear. I do love this interior topographic pattern. I'm not exactly sure. I spent some time trying to figure out where this is. Um, you guys can let me know in the comments. It's, it says Mount Air, A-I-R-E. Um, not exactly sure where Mount Air is. I haven't been there. Um, so some other place names that are in here, Mill Creek Crest, Butch Hollow, Lambs Canyon. So I'm guessing out west, but man, I think it would have been really cool if they had done like Italy, since the 3V gear is Vini Vidi Vinci, um, they could have done like the actual Rubicon, uh, or they could have done, you know, the Southern Alps in Italy. That would have been neat. But anyway, but anyway, I digress. So let's talk about this bag. Two things that I love about this bag. Well, we're gonna leave this main compartment open because this main compartment is the first thing that I really love about this bag. Very useful tons of space, probably, probably a little bit bigger than it needs to be for a true EDC pack. Um, this is more of a weekender, two or three day pack, really. Um, you could, you could get packing cubes in this thing. And that kind of is the defining feature of if you can put packing cubes in a bag and still have room to spare, you know, it might not be an EDC backpack, but the organization is well dialed in for EDC. The three zippered pockets in here, even though this zippered pocket is, once you put a laptop in the laptop compartment is like really tight. Um, they should have put a little bit more dimension to this pocket uh, to, or give it a little elastic to fit more gear into it. It's really tight. And so you're talking really only kind of flat stuff into this pocket, but some cords would fit in there just fine. So this interior compartment, Love the white, love the topo pattern, really distinctive, really fun to flop open. And when you only open it a little ways, which is 
probably, you know, you're not going to clamshell this bag when in use. Imagine sitting on a city bus or a subway and clamshelling that whole thing open. No, you're really going to be using it like this, right? You're going to open up the top part. And the good news is when you do that, because of this white pattern that they've used, it's really easy to see what's going on in the bag. You don't have to break out your flashlight to, you know, get in and find the gear that you're looking for. So really, really nice. The second thing that I really enjoy about this bag is both admin panels and pockets. So this pocket here and this pocket on the side are both very useful and both very easy to get to. Um, easy to open, they flop right open. They don't flop so open that things are falling out of them. You can still use them as drop pockets. Um, but yeah, that very useful and I found myself really enjoying. And again, probably because of this insanely cool high contrast between the exterior of the bag and the interior of these compartments, but well organized, good space, and useful pockets. So interior of the bag, very nice, very useful, and the admin pockets on the side and the front, very useful. Love both of those things about the bag. I, I've got a third one, if you'll humor me for a second, because this there's, there are some really neat things about this bag. The third one I wanted to talk about is just about an overall concern that you may have about this bag. Is 40 liters way too big for a backpack? Well, if you're having to toss in a removable waist belt, the backpack may not be an EDC bag, okay? 40 liters is massive. But what I wanted to share with you is that, practically speaking, when I wore this bag, it's very light, and the straps and the cushioning are very good. This is one of the longest backpacks that I have that purports to be an EDC bag. I've got a, a low pro um, camera bag that is the same length and this hex bag over here is the same length, just longer than most. This one outdoes those two bags because it adds this kind of really cool O-shaped lumbar um, padding. So the bag itself is very comfortable when you wear it and you can hitch it up with the straps and then strap the sternum strap together. I found that the waist strap was kind of just forgettable, uh, but sternum strap is fine and the, the actual straps themselves are just really robust and really nice. Okay, two things I don't love about this bag. All right, thing number one. Oh, how can you make a bag this big with this much organization and not give it a flat bottom. It's got this curved thing going on that so many bag makers love, but practically speaking, like you don't need a backpack to be aerodynamic. What are you doing? Not only does it trim out just actual space on the bottom of the main compartment, it just, the bag won't stand up. Obviously, you know, it's just on one line and then it curves up from there and that's just annoying as heck to me. Like somebody will explain it to me one day, but this looks like it was designed to be an aircraft wing rather than a backpack. And while that might look nice in theory, it, you know, chops off the bottom of the water bottle holder, chops off the bottom of the main compartment and makes the bag, you know, so that every time you set it down, you have to prop it against something and lean it back, which is not the best. I mean, it, it just, I don't know, not a fan, not a fan of the curved bottom when the flat bottom, the flat bottom, the flat bottom, the flat bottom, the flat bottom works just fine. Like there's so many bags that have a flat bottom that are just like, what are you doing? Okay, enough about that. The second thing that I think could have been better about this bag is the material choices. So the problem with this bag, it is light, so I know what they were going with. The, pr the problem with this bag is that it is so massive, like massive, massive. You could shrink this down by about 25% and get a much more useful EDC backpack. What you do end up with, because they've had to make so many super light material choices so that this still works is, I don't know if you can hear this, the whole thing is just extra crinkly everywhere. It makes a ton of noise. And this 
molly paneling, this rubberized molly paneling, is super unpleasant to touch for me. The, the ripstop material is great. The Cordura, the nylon here, um, it's okay. It feels kind of cheap. It's not as thick as I would expect um, from a premium bag. And I guess this toes the line on premium, right? $85. Um, but the, yeah, I don't like the laser cut molly panel. I would have just gone with more of the ripstop. You don't need attachment points on a 40 liter bag. So it's almost like they tried to do everything on this bag, all the organization, all the attachment points, all the pockets, all the everything. And I do love pockets. In fact, if you'll remember from two minutes ago, the pockets are my favorite thing about this bag. Get rid of the attachment points. I mean, practically speaking, I couldn't think of anything else to put in this bag um, unless I was gonna turn it into a weekend two day trip hiking bag. Uh, in which case, I'd probably just buy one of the regular 3V gear bags because I wouldn't care if I looked like I was okay in a city. Um, nor is it easy to find, you know, Molly accessories that really work with this style of bag versus a much more tactical looking bag. So get rid of the icky feeling Molly panel here and replace it, in my mind, with either just more of this ripstop or something cool like uh, Incase did with this bag, you could have pulled the topo the topographic forward and done a splash of the topographic on the outside of the bag. Probably not for everybody. Um, but just blacked out would have worked fine or blacked out with a little bit more red detail. Um, all right, so that's it. That's the bag. What are we left with? We're left with a fairly insanely organized EDC-ish Weekender bag that... Almost is great. Almost. Practically speaking, I found it to be way too big. Uh, 40 liters is way too big for an EDC bag. But if you're looking at this bag as a larger kind of camping bag, I mean, it's got the sternum strap. It's got the, um, the waist belt. It's got a ton of space. It is super light. Now, because again, it's trying to be all things to all people, it's not as light as some other packs out there, say from Osprey, uh, because it, it does have a lot of non-ultralight non choices going on. That being said, it is a well-made bag. It is a good bag. I do enjoy what they tried to do with the bag, but I found myself just a little bit confused, practically speaking, using it. And I just didn't love the feel of the bag compared to some other bags that are out there not too far off in the price range. Um, so I'm thinking about bags from like Timbuktu, Topo Designs, and, and some of those more traditional non-tactical bags. So if you're gonna play in this non-tactical space as a tactical company, like VanQuest did up here, like Go Ruck kind of toes the line. It's, I mean, rucking isn't military, but it kind of toes the line, right? Um, give us a super smooth bag. Um, and you don't need to, all the bells and whistles on the outside. So all that being said, I hope the review made sense to you because I was a little confused by this bag. Do I recommend buying it? Uh, honestly, no, it's not, it's not my favorite. I do love that they're trying new things. I love the uh, choices that they've made on the interior of this bag, but practically speaking, using it, it's just all felt a bit floppy to me and it all just kind of flopped a little bit in practical usage. Um, so try it out though. Uh, if it did appeal to you, uh, I can recommend the quality of the bag and I can recommend the straps um, and I can recommend the organization. Just overall, it, it was a little bit confused. Maybe a bag with a bit of an identity crisis. All right, Wanderers, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed the review. Hope you enjoyed getting to see another unique bag. It's what we do on this channel. One take bag reviews, but I try to bring you bags you haven't seen before and bags that uh, make you think a little bit. All right, everybody, we will see you next time. Bye for now.